Good morning, friends, wherever you are, and welcome to today's Cichlids and Coffee live stream. Hope you're having uh, your favorite beverage, as I am, and I hope you're having it in one of these cups. <laughs> Shameless plug. Oh, that's good. All right. So, how y'all doing? Hope you're doing great. I'm, uh, to be honest, still a little bit exhausted from uh, four days of uh, pandemonium in Philadelphia, but I'm back and uh, ready to go. Still a little sore. <laughs> Voice is still a little scratchy, but um, I am ready to get the show on the road. So, um, let's see here. We've got... Uh, some great people already here and more getting on. And Fishman Marcus was first on the stream. Fishman, do you have some stickers? You were so early. You should get some uh, channel stickers. If you'd like some, just send me uh, an email if you don't have some already. The ben.o.cichlid, ben.o.cichlid at gmail. Fishman Marcus. I think you might already have stickers, but maybe not. Hey, uh, let me know what the audio and video are like. Let me know if uh, we're coming through clearly. Hey, Cat Sailor in the house, and uh, Chris G. And let's see here. Hey, Sunder, all the way from India. Good to see you, Sunder. Glad you're here. And Salient Aquatics in the house, who is a member of the Patreon. And we have added his name for some reason. Uh, Salient wasn't appearing on the scroll and of Patreon members. And... I felt kind of bad when I found out about it, but uh, he's on there now. And Patreon is a way for you to support the channel and become a member of the Garage Gang and be able to help out on a monthly basis with the support of the channel. But Salient is now on there. So uh, thank you for your support. Thank you to all of you Patreon members for your support. And Michael Lotonero in the house. Good afternoon. And let's see here, scrolling and cruising the scroll. Davy Larson's in the house. Good morning to you. And Peas and Haps. Hey, Peas and Haps. Gabriel's Glass Box is here. Hey, GP. GP is what I'd call uh, not just a, uh, <clears throat> he's not really uh, just a moderator. He, I, would, I would call him a channel benefactor for reasons that him and I are aware of. And uh, Davy Larson, two minutes to count out. Thank you. <laughs> ZZip. In the house, and Daryl Dimer. Dimer, I hope I pronounced that right. Daryl Dimer's in the house. NJW's in from UK, from the Great Britain. Loved visiting Great Britain. And Ricky De Hoyos. Hey, Jeff Hester. And Aquarium of the Bay. What a great, uh, what a great name. Aquarium of the Bay. I just makes me think of San Francisco. You know, a town I, I have visited many times. In the jeans, in the house. And uh, Sigrid Kings is here, one of our wonderful moderators. And Melissa. Hey, Melissa. Or Baglio and Tamara are also here. Yeah, we got some great folks. Todd Martin. And uh, Window Liquor Number Five. <laughs> Why do I always laugh when I say your name? Window Liquor Number Five. <laughs> Big Shrimpin and Henry Chavez are here. Very, very cool. And AJK. All right, let, let, let's get going. I could, I could spend all day saying your names, and uh, let's go ahead and shut down the uh, Patreon. And, and uh, if, you, if you want to know more about Patreon, the details are in the description. And other ways to support the channel, of course, is if you want to get a hold of some mugs and things like that, go to the Spring Store and uh, use Livestream for a 10% discount at the Teespring Store. And uh, that's a, one way you can support the channel. T-shirts, mugs, good stuff like that. And uh, also you can use the Amazon link. To get to Amazon, another great way to uh, support the channel is to use the Amazon link. To get to Amazon, any purchase you make will give a credit to the channel, e even though your prices stay the same. So it's kind of a cool program. So lots of ways to support the channel. But you being here, that's the best way, and I really appreciate it very, very much. So uh, let's go ahead and do the official start to this live stream. What do you say?
If you're new to the channel, uh, be sure to hit that sub button, the uh, bell, and uh, thumbs up. Let YouTube know something's good going on. Encourage your buddies uh, to subscribe. We're so close to 50,000. I was hoping I could make it in 2022. That was sort of the goal, like we get to 50,000. We'll see. It's kind of tight. It, it looks like it, uh, it, it, it's going to be tough, but maybe we can make it. Get the word out and, uh, and be sure to hit that sub button. Very appreciated. Big shout out to my wonderful moderators who helped keep the stream rolling. All of you who have subscribed, thank you for your support. And a big shout out to the Sickly Shack for being a uh, key sponsor. And use Shack Attack 10 for any orders from the Shack for a 10% discount. And Shack Attack 15 for fish orders over $100. Discounts don't apply to shipping, of course. He just charges you what they charge him. So also a big shout out to uh, my friends at the Aquarium Co-op who are also uh, big helpers of the channel, and also to Super Cichlids, Super Cichlids, who helps to sponsor the banner contest. Uh, they're over in Delaware. Uh, a lot of, they have fish and discus and supply Super Cichlids in Delaware. They are the um, channel banner contest sponsor for the Ben uh, O apostrophe Cichlid channel on, on uh, Facebook. So there you go. That pays the bills. No more commercials. Gladiator, Gladiator Mex. Wow. Never seen you before, and you're asking me about an unscripted water clarifier. Never seen that before. If you want to send me some information on it, I'll take a look at it. Send the information to my email address, right? Ben.o.cichlid at gmail, and I'll take a look. I'm very into uh, evaluating products and checking them out a hey, big shout out for a super chat we got a super chat came in from chris g thank you chris g very appreciated uh super chats are a way to throw a little uh, money at the dancer <laughs> horrible analogy i'm sorry uh okay how's the audio visual did you folks tell me already how the audio visual is let's see av 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 let's see Sound and picture. Tell me how it is. Maybe you did, and I missed it in the chat. Mara, I'm a first timer. Oh, okay. I thought I saw that name before. The Cichlid Shack is in the house. All right. You're going to like today's news, James. Chris Aquazone. Now we got some new names in here Robert Egan, Dan Coat. Love it. Love it. All right. So we had something special today. Any um, any super chat today, over five bucks, just to help cover the shipping. Any super chat today over five dollars is uh, is going to receive a packet of Sarah food. If you can make it out, packet of Sarah food for any super chat over five bucks. Uh, after you do the super chat, send me your uh, complete mailing address to the email address, and I will send you a packet of Sarah food. Sarah's amazing. Uh, Sarah, they've been they've been uh, around for I don't know over forty years in the fish industry, and you know providing quality products. And I did a video where I interviewed the folks from Sarah, and uh, I was just very very impressed with their commitment to uh, quality. And, and everything else. Now, if you do, a, if you're the biggest super chat today, over 20 bucks, I will send you a uh, a filtration starter kit, which consists of these uh, awesome crystal clear filter media balls and some stuff called Ciporax, Ciporax, which is a lot more than just plain rings. Apparently, it's a very highly researched, very efficient way to um, generate beneficial bacteria in a filter. This is uh, 26.4 US gallons for 20. So if you have a 29 gallon tank and you're setting up a, or even a 55 gallon, you want to throw a little Saporax in there, maybe some polishing material in there, and your uh, Super Chat is the largest today, over 20 bucks. I'll send you these two items from Sarah. Thank you very much to my friends at Sarah, especially to Klaus, who has been just an awesome, 
awesome about these kind of things and helping to grow the channel. Salient Aquatic comes in. Now, Salient, that puts you over $10. So what I said was five bucks. So we're going to, we'll send you two packets of food. If that's what you, what you want, two packets of food. And because um, we'll do it, we'll do it. And, uh, but I can't guarantee that I'm going to get any tiger barbs with that money. <laughs> Uh, just an ongoing uh, joke we have about Tiger Barbs. So, <clears throat> unfortunately, um, I can't ship out of the United States because it is, it's just ridiculous. It would cost me like 15 to 20 bucks to get a couple packets of Sarah food up to somebody in Canada. So, I, I, I really can't do, do outside of the continental United States, even Hawaii and Puerto Rico are a problem. So Robert Johnson in the house, supposed to be sleeping, but I'm working a Saturday morning. So here I, <laughs> well, thank you, Robert. I appreciate you showing up. Now, so keep that in mind, folks. Five bucks for food, biggest super chat over 20 gets the filter starter pack. Now, um, a couple quick uh, heads up on some stuff that's coming out. You know, you, you, you love it when, when people listen to you, right? When you suggest something. And when Expertmatic first came out with, with, their, um, with their internal filters, which are beasts. I mean, they, they, they push a lot of water, like, I don't know, like 400 gallons an hour or something. Uh, they create uh, aeration, right? They, they create surface tension breakup, lots of bubbles. Uh, they, their filters work like crazy. I know because when you clean the sponges out, they're just full of gunk. So their filters work. They're a workable filter. Comes in at about 30 bucks. Not bad when you consider, uh, like we compare it, let's say, to something like a Shark 900. Shark 900 comes in at about 75 bucks, right? So, um, I, so I, I've been in communication with Expertmatic. You, you, you folks probably know that for a couple of years now. And, and I told them a long time ago, I said, look, the filter is great, but it really stands out being white. It really, really stands out in the aquarium. And I'd rather have filtration that is a little bit more... Um, you know, sublime, a little bit more, not quite, uh, I don't want filtration to be uh, like a, a point of, of, of attention in the aquarium. I want it to be just a necessary thing in the back corner. So uh, they, they sent me this to review. And I'm going to do a review on it over the next week. You'll get to see it. And I'll show you the box. So hallelujah, they've come out with a black one, and it's called the AF2000 internal filter, and I imagine it's still putting out let's see, it says suitable for up to 180 gallon aquariums. I don't know if I would use this as the sole filtration on 180. I'd probably put two of them on there, that's just me, but um, The aquarium should have a depth of about 35 inches. So it needs to go into a, a deep aquarium, 35-inch aquarium. It's filtration, oxygen supply, and water circulation, which it does. It does do that. And I'm looking for the gallons per hour. The old one was claiming about 400 gallons per hour. But at any rate, let me go ahead and just show you. What they did was kind of smart. Of course, the unit that they... They made the, the, the pump much more heavy-duty, much more solid. This is a much more solid pump. And as you can see, it's very easy to get to the impeller, which is the, really the key thing with filters. You want to be able to get to that impeller. So, <clears throat> and what they did is they have the black filters, and they just made a clear plastic uh, hole, uh, you know, encasement of clear plastic. So now the filter appears black. Very smart, Expertmatic, and it looks really cool. It is a cool looking filter. As you can see, it can take in gunk from the bottom, and, and instead of having the openings on the sides like the old ones, it's taking the gunk in through the bottom and, and cycling up through the sponges, as opposed to uh, the prior one, which had openings on all three compartments, 
and your top compartment would usually get really mucked up and the bottom two would, would be relatively clean by comparison. So this is gonna force the gunk to go through all three compartments. So this is smart, very smart setup. Uh, the only thing I would do different expertmatic is I would consider going with magnets only because suction cups seem to fail. One of the things I love about Expertmatic is the compartments, and these compartments come apart. I can work them, there we go. So they're easy to work on. It looks like they've gotten rid of that center, that center plastic piece that used to be inside there. But you can pull out the middle and put some uh, rings or charcoal in there if you want. And you can see, very nicely made, very heavy duty. Very impressed, coming in at about 30 some odd dollars. And again, compared to a $75, uh, she's say 700, it, it's, it's gonna give them a run for the money because it's a, it's a powerful and it's a good looking, good looking unit. So my only, my only improvement recommendation, Expertmatic, is consider going with magnets and you'll have probably a, what I would call a perfect internal filter so they've listened now they'll listen again and, and go with magnets and i'll do another review for you but i'll be doing a full uh, review of this filter include including running it on a tank so you can see how it runs on a tank and uh, how powerful it is they're very very strong very very strong you don't want to put it in with discus angelfish uh, betta any kind of fish that doesn't want to get blown around, right? You, that has you know large fins. You don't want to do that. Any big flat fish. I mean, I wouldn't even put it in there with with my big vieja. I mean, that big vieja is as wide as my hand, so he would get blown around. And I've got a powerful, powerful wave maker in there, but it goes on a timer on and off. This thing would be running twenty four seven. So. So at any rate, let's see here. Now, uh, another thing I like about these expert Maddox is if <clears throat> if you want to run just two compartments, you can just run two. If you notice the tank behind me, turn this around. That's the community tank. You see in the community tank, uh, there's two expert Maddox, and they're the white ones. You see how they stand out? That's why I have things blocking them, and so you can't really see them. So the driftwood and plants that kind of breaks the, but it, but they're uh, they're a little bit of an eyesore. So this black one's going to be a lot ni a lot nicer, especially with that black background. And if you want to, you can reduce them down to two compartments. So if you don't want the entire three, you can go with two. And uh, if you want to go a little bit more compact, just one of the advantages. As you can see, that that uh, you're looking you're looking past a, a a lighting pole there. That's that black thing you see right in front of the camera there. But you can see the uh, community tank is just doing really really well. We're going to be adding more fish to that community very soon. The way back, let's make a stop here at the 90 gallon. 90 gallon continues to thrive. I love the way the, the geos, there are little pec, the pec fins on the bottom are getting really, really long. And they're just looking really, really pretty. The um, green tear is blossoming, putting on some, some weight and size. So everyone in that tank is, is doing great. My little uh, community tank there behind it. Live bear tank is doing awesome. And, uh, you can't see the bettas back there, but the betta duplex is rocking and rolling. All right. Oh, wait a minute. I think I missed. I think I missed a couple super chats. Let's see here. Saline Aquatics. Saline, we got you. Thank you for that. And don't don't forget, for every increment of five, you can get one packet of food. Hey, GP comes in with a uh, a nice super chat. Uh, keep up the great work, Ben. Thank you, GP. I appreciate that, and I appreciate your your wonderful support. 
if if you end up being the uh, the top super chat, you can get the Sarah filtration uh, kit consisting of the Ciporax and and the um, the crystal clear filter medium, basically water polishing water polishing balls that you can put in the top tray or a tray of a filter and this Ciporax, which is supposed to be an amazing amazing product so if you're if you're twenty dollars to the biggest biggest super chat over 20 you get that and of course any any increments of five super chats you get a packet of sarah food big shout out to sarah they sent me um probiotic and regular what's called growth food and uh both of them look like it's community tank food but it's you can feed this to anything it's just full of wonderful stuff so there you go now, another product you're going to see reviewed over the next few days, or maybe the next couple of weeks, is this product here. This is, hey, Jerry's Fish Room comes in with a super chat. Thank you, my friend. Jerry is a moderator and a friend of the channel who is currently, who's just set up a 180-gallon custom-made tank from our friends over at Glass Cages. Robert Egan comes in with a super chat. Thank you, Robert. You should have my address, all my tanks like Sarah Growth Food. Uh, Robert, I, I usually don't keep addresses. If you would be kind enough to please send me an email with your address again, I'd appreciate it. Maybe going to start keeping addresses because I always ask you that again. Um, Robert, it's for $5 increments. So you, I'll send you three. You're close to $15 right now, I think. Let me see. Yeah, I'll send you three packets. So um, I'm not going to squabble over a couple pennies. So here's uh, here's something I'm going to be also reviewing that got sent to me, and it, it's kind of kind of crazy, you know. It it's a uh, it it it's a light. It's an LED light, very bright, very bright LED light, and it's got suction cups on the back here. You can this is a submersible LED light, so you can put it like in the back of the aquarium. I guess you could you could attach it to the glass top. You could put it near the bottom of the tank, which is probably what it's intended for. And I'll tell you why. Uh, you see this little nub here, this little piece right here? This is for an airline. So you attach your airline right here, and, and then you're going to have um, bubbles, probably colored bubbles, <laughs> excuse me, coming up. Uh, coming up from the aquarium. So I, I might put this in my live bear tank because right now I have a, a light sitting on top of a couple evaporation trays, those plastic evaporation trays you custom cut. And I'm afraid that it's going to get bumped and the light's going to fall into the tank. It's not very stable. So I'm, this this will fit. This size will fit inside of that 20-gallon tall. So I might just use this. And you can set this up for... Uh, blue, red, green, white, any combination of colors that you want. And you can have sunrise and sunset. And you can even set it up so that you have storms and um, disco lighting that is flashing different colors, which I don't know why you'd ever do that to a fish. But <laughs> but it does have a disco, a disco sort of setting. So at any rate... Watch for the review of this light. It's very, very cool, very well built, and uh, so watch for that. Uh, watch for that review. They send you. Uh, they send you some airline. This is uh, airline that usually comes with these products. I don't like it because it's 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 very cheap airline. It kinks. It, you see that kink there? It's almost impossible to work that kink out of it. So uh, I'll use the airline that I have from Aquarium Co-op. But it also comes with this very cool uh, remote control. This here. Little remote controls. So you can sit there in front of your tank and, all right, let's go green. Let's go blue. Let's add a little magenta. Let's add a little uh, yellow. <laughs> so you got nothing to do. You can just drive your fish crazy. So... At any rate, watch for the review on that light. It's going to make the lighting of that um, of that twenty gallon tall uh, a little bit a little bit uh, safer, a little safer. So um, <clears throat> today's topic uh, today's topic is on filtration, and uh, 
I wanted to, the reason I even thought of that as a topic is that whenever I, I, I release a, a, a video like, like the one on the, um, like, like the one I just released on the FX about going nine months, I get a lot of different, it, it's amazing how many different opinions I get. And the, um, gotta keep my throat, my throat is actually still sore from screaming at the Phillies, at the Phillies game. And did I go to the best game or what? Five home runs by the Phillies? I mean, that was definitely the best game to be at. I hope they give us a better one. But anyway, I don't want to talk baseball during the live stream. It's, it's upsetting right now anyway. <laughs> yeah, we'll get a, uh, uh, a Chris and Don, uh, Dan, we'll get a, you know, like a staying alive kind of a thing, you know, with the fish. And so at any, at any rate, the, uh, the FX6 video got a wide range of of um, of responses, going from "you should let it go a year" to "you should clean it every month," and one person couldn't believe it had run for nine months because theirs after a month is is disgusting. And the, the thing I want to make re really clear is that there are so many moving parts in everybody's aquarium. And very often some of the comparisons that people were making, they were making before, uh, maybe they had watched the video to a point where I hadn't really discussed the pre-filtration. The, the pre-filter makes all the difference in the world. It, it wouldn't... It wouldn't function. It wouldn't run and stay that clean and run that long without a pre-filter. It just wouldn't. It traps bigger pieces of gunk like poop and, and food. It, it, they stay on the surface until they, they sort of pulverize down to a small enough particle to fit in, you know, in through the filter. The food gets pecked off by fish. So food that would normally be inside the filter is instead in the belly of the fish. Uh, which I guess eventually turns into poop, but but still, it's a little bit more efficient. And so it, it's it, just a lot of different opinions. Now, just to share with you my philosophy about filtration, I honestly believe that you could you could go with all sponges inside a hang on back and inside of a canister, different. Different PPI, right? Different, different um, uh, coarse, you know, medium, fine, different types of sponges. But I feel that you could go entirely sponges, and you would be fine. You would be okay. And when I talk to the folks over at Swiss Tropicals, uh, they're, you know, the 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 PhD, right, that owns Swiss Tropicals. You know, he's very emphatic about that. He's like, you can let these things run, and they run forever, and don't really need to do much about them. Uh, if a few spots get clogged up, it, it's very unlikely. But if they do, it's uh, it's not a big deal. It, it, it's 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 and there's a tremendous amount of surface area in these porrid or what they call the matten sponges. So now add that to my way of setting tanks up where I, where I put in more substrate than most people. I mean, if you look at, you look at this tank behind me, this, this substrate is, you've got an inch below what you can see here, and it's gradually increasing as you go towards the back of the tank. So you end up with maybe between four or five inches of uh, aragonite crushed coral, right? And, and some black, you know, some black substrate. So I use a lot of, a lot of substrate as a, a home for beneficial bacteria. So I'm, I'm covering my bases in, in a couple ways. So I'm not that concerned about having, um, you know, something very um, super porous. You know, I don't, I, I don't really, I'm not looking for $100 uh, for a half for a half gallon of of biomedia, I'm just not doing that. I, I can do it with sponges. Now, all that being said, when you have friends like Sarah, 
and 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 a, a channel sponsor like like uh, like the Cichlid Check, I get sent stuff. I get sent stuff like Seachem Matrix Filter Media, uh, C Porax. I get sent that kind of stuff. So I throw it in the filters. So I'm I'm kind of covered on 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 it from every possible angle, but I do sincerely believe that you could go all sponges in all of your now. I'm not promoting internal sponge filters. Make that very clear. I don't. I, I don't think those are aesthetic. They. They. Um, I have one running right now, in the 20 gallon tall, and it's disguised by plants, so it's not that bad, right? And and most people who use those internal sponges, unless you're a retailer, right? And and you don't care. You just have them right in the middle of the tanks. These big sponge filters. Um, I have a very small mini one in the back corner of the of the 20 tall. Kind of, hit, kind of hidden there behind tanks, but there's a little mini sponge there, and uh, and it, you know, I just would rather not have them in there. I'd rather just have an intake tube and, and an output, you know, an output tube, that kind of thing. But <clears throat> at any rate, I think I, I I think nine months and and is is dialed in for that canister right now. And when I say dialed in, I mean doing dialing in your filters is actually something you should do. Open them up after a month, open them up after three months, after six months, see how they look and get a feel for, for when, when's the sweet spot that they really should be cracked open and then and, and cleaned and serviced. In the case of that fluval, I think nine months is the sweet spot. Now that can change, that can change. Uh, the fish will get bigger. I might add, I like to add a um, big spot half, a, a, a bucanoto, uh, you know, fish like that. I might add a few more. As you increase the bio load, you increase the feeding, right? So uh, it might just ease back to six months. It might just go back to six months. So <clears throat> at any rate, that, 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 finding that sweet spot is important. It's important for your hang on back filters. It's important for all your filters you know, to have a, a, a working idea like, okay, this, that filter on that tank can go this much time. And then writing, writing it down somewhere, like I've written down the night, the date, nine months from now on when I'm going to crack open that FX6. It's up on my, on my scheduling board up on the wall. So that's when I'm going to crack it open. And I'm not going to worry about it between now and then. I'm just not going to worry about it unless I notice something really weird. A lot of bubbles coming out, uh, a, a marked reduce, you know, like a reduction in flow, a leak in the canister. I mean, that would be the only thing that might get me to touch that canister because, and again, this kind of goes back to my philosophy, the less you mess with canisters, the better. <clears throat> the more you open and close them, take them apart and uh, move around those O-rings and do stuff like that, the more likelihood something's going to start leaking on you. If they're running and they're sealed and there's no leaks, uh, amen, let them run. You know, let them run as long as they can. The less, the less you mess with them, the better. And probably a, a, probably a philosophy you can apply to all aspects of, of aquarium maintenance. The less you mess with everything, the better, right? Because um, a water change, working on your filters, Cleaning the internal glass, right? Cleaning the outside glass. All of those things stress your fish. All of it is stressful for your fish. And I make the, you know, I've made the joke before. It's not easy being a YouTube fish. Because I'm always messing with new equipment. I'm always doing stuff to touch up the tanks because I want them to look really good in the video. And, and uh, so it's not easy being a YouTube fish. I'll tell you So... At any rate, let, let's see. Uh, I have something I want to share with you, which is kind of cool. Now, you remember, you remember, by the way, did I miss any Super Chats? No, for those of you that just joined in, Super Chats, $5 or more, you get a packet of, uh, of Sarah food sent to you. Be sure to send me your mailing address. It has to be within the United States because I can't ship abroad. Within the four, I only get within the 48. Lower 48 here in the U.S., uh, five dollars. If you do fifteen dollars, you'll get three packets of food. Biggest, uh, uh, biggest uh, 
Super Chat over 20, you'll get the uh, filtration. The Ciporax, exceptional uh, filtration media, and the filter polishing from Seraph. Over 40 years, and a team of scientists they have over there working on fish stuff. It's kind of cool. If you go to their webpage, uh, you'll see that they have a heck of a lot of stuff. Filters, aquariums, uh, meds, uh, testing kits. Uh, you know, food is just one, one thin slice of what they offer. So at any rate, so you know, you remember, let me show you something here. You remember this guy, Otto Fairnix Tetrastigma. He was on, on, he was dying. And my wife thought he was dead while I was in Philly, but noticed he was still, his, you know, he, he moved like a, a fin when she walked by. And so she said, okay, I'm gonna leave him alone. He was on his side. I got home, he was on his side and wasn't moving. I thought he was dead for sure, but he still had a little bit of color. Next, so I said, okay, I'm just going to leave him. I'm not going to euthanize him. Next morning, I come down. He's gasping. He's on his side. And I finally said, you know what? I don't know what's going on with this guy. I'm going to give him one more chance to kind of get back. I reach into that little tank. And I pick him up. I, I add a divider to the 55. Let me, see I can, let me see if I can show him to you. I added a divider to that 55 gallon. I have two two uh, silver dollars on the right side. And on the left side, he's been upright, swimming around, and eating is the autopharynx tetrastigma. And uh, I don't even, I'm not even sure you can see him, and I really can't move my camera because of the wiring connecting it to the computer, but maybe, hold on one second. So there he is. His, uh, his name now is Lazarus, back from the dead. His right eye is, is pretty much gone, even though the infection has, has uh, diminished and, and is almost, uh, it, you can tell the, the infection has gone, but you can still tell it's, it's, the eye is still not, it, it's about 90%. It's about 90%. But he is a miracle fish. I mean, compare that. I mean, compare that to that. I mean, he was pretty much getting his last rites. So, you know, my theory... My theory is that it might have been a couple things. Maybe that small aquarium, even though it had an air stone, it just wasn't enough for this guy. He needed the space. He wasn't getting enough oxygen. Um, you know, it could be a variety of, 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 of things. And, and, you, and you're right, John. I, I think I just might let him stay in that 55-gallon. Uh, he doesn't really hit the food as it's coming down, I mean, he can't really see from both sides. So if the food is coming down on his right side, he misses it. But then he goes around and he, um, you know, he sifts through the, the substrate and he finds the food. And he's able to eat it that way. And so he is eating. 
and doing well. And uh, Kathy named her a fish Lazarus. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> so uh, this is, for me, this is like a miracle. And just to get the backstory, I, I moved him to a small, like a five-gallon tank to treat an eye with, uh, I, with salt. And, and I was using salt, and he was doing okay. Then I added some Marison just to put a little antibiotic in there, and he immediately flipped over on his side and was on death's doorstep, immediately did a big water change and added activated carbon to remove the Marison, which he obviously didn't like. And, uh, but then he never fully came back, but he, but he wouldn't die. He just wouldn't die. He looked so bad that I was making arrangements to pick up a replacement fish And uh, you know we were pretty much uh, we were pretty much making funeral arrangements, but um, there he is. This has got to be the toughest fish I've ever owned. At one point, his his gills were all, or his uh, his scales were all puffed up. He looked like a puffer fish. A couple of years ago, I treated him with salt, and he came right back. And uh, so he is. He's just a fighter. He's just a fighter of a fish. Probably knows we're talking about him. So uh, anyway, meet Lazarus. <clears throat> and fingers crossed, yeah, I'll probably end up just keeping them in there. And I've got some fish coming from uh, the shack, and some of them are African cichlids. So I'll probably take those silver dollars, maybe throw them in the community tank, or maybe put them in with the geos and hope they don't get eaten, and maybe put the uh, take that plant out and put the new fish that are coming in on the right side of that tank. Use that tank a little bit as a, um, as a quarantine tank. But never a dull moment. Have you ever had a fish do that? Have you ever had a fish that um, you were you were pretty much ready, ready to uh, scoop them out? Now I used to have um, I used to have clown loaches, and they would lay on their side. But I guess they they just like to mess with you. They like take naps. They lay on they lay on top of each other. And they're hilarious. But a couple times I was ready to go get the go get the net and say, uh oh, I lost a clown loach, and boom, they would just take off and they're just they're just messing with me. And it got to the point where if one of them did die, I'd probably leave them in for a few days before I'd take them out because they were just so silly that way. But um, have you ever had a fish like that that came back from the dead? I mean, that's, uh, I mean, he, he looks great on his good eye side. He looks wonderful. All right, let's just open this up to questions. And <clears throat> did I miss a super chat? Let me see. Let's see. Did I miss a super chat? Robert Egan, I got your super chat. And sent me two packs. Don't forget, Robert, you get three packs. Be sure to remind me in your super chat, uh, in your email, be sure to remind me how much your super chat was and how many packs you want. And certainly, GP, if you end up being the biggest super chat over 20 and you want that filtration stuff, just let me know. I'll mail it out to you. No problems, my friend. All right, let's take a look at your questions. Let's take a quick look at the chat and what's going on here. Saline Aquatics had a goldfish come back with API meds. Very cool. I'm not sure what was what happened with that Marison. And there is, I know there's gram negative and there's gram positive antibiotics. They do different things. And maybe Maybe Marison is gram positive. I got to check that out. Maybe he needed gram negative. I don't know. But it was within an hour he was on his side. When prior to that, he was responsive, upright, eating, interacting, 
and I was just doing 50% water changes and adding a tablespoon of, uh, of salt, you know, per, per five gallons. And uh, anyway. All right, GP. That's cool. That's cool. As long as they're over 20. Fancy go for Daniel Martin. It's been watching you for a while. Daniel Macon. Hi, Ben. Watching you for a while and your fish look amazing. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate that, my friend. Jerry says, no Lazarus fish for me, Ben. Mine are fully committed when they go. Yeah, I'll tell you, there's <laughs> something to be said for that. I was, I mean, I, this, this is like suffering. I mean, I don't want to euthanize a fish. I've never had to euthanize a fish. <clears throat> and um, I just let them go and they go. But man, oh, man. All right, let's see here. Davy Larson. Davy Larson is uh, putting in his bid for the Acera filtration products. All right, Davy, don't forget, if you're the largest uh, Super Chat over 22, be sure to send me your full address. I might have it, but send it anyway. You have my email address. Katie, or Kathy, that's Kathy. I have a yo-yo loach that lays on its side. Thought he was dead first time I saw him do this. Common for yo-yos. His name is George Cause, because he is curious about everything. <laughs> Very cute. For those of you who don't know about Curious George. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Very cute name. All right, any questions? Go ahead and, and shoot them at me now. We're uh, uh, approaching on the hour. Let's go ahead and get into your questions. Questions about fish and filtration and fish room future plans. Uh, don't mention the Phillies to me. I'm in a very bad mood about that right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to scan back through the chat and see if I missed a question. Let's see here. Saline Aquatics, uh, you should add cichlid lake salt as it adds. Yes, I did do that. Whenever I do any water change with an African cichlid, I do add cichlid lake salt. Cichlid lake salt adds um, a very, very vital trace minerals in a uh, similar proportionate amount as occur in the lake. Now, you could say, yeah, but these fish are... 25 generations aquarium bred. Yeah, you could say that. Very often, though, the, uh, the fish from the cichlid shack, which all of my African cichlids are from the cichlid shack, and they are usually F1, which means uh, they're one generation removed from, you know, their, their parents were from the lake. Those are F0, right? And then they they use that pair, then and then they then they raise their fry, and those are the F ones that are being sold, or he's buying F ones from a wholesaler. They're usually F one. Robert Johnson. If a tank can run fine on a sponge filter, then I can run my canisters 100% sponge. Never had an issue. Yeah. Yeah. There's no reason why you can't run 100% sponge. Now, if I was selling expensive media, I might try and make a case against that, but I couldn't make a strong case. If there's surface, if there's surface, eh, there's going to be beneficial, there's going to be growth. There's going to be bacterial growth if there's a surface. Your plants, your wood, your rocks, right, your filter, your sponges, your substrate, it's all got beneficial bacteria. 
and the beneficial bacteria will find a place to land and grow. Cichlid King shared the Swiss Tropicals link. Yeah. They 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 know their sponges. That's all they do. They're just sponge sponge experts. Kathy uh, Gunness, am I pronouncing that right, Kathy? I'll just call you Kathy. How's that? Kathy, Kathy G. Uh, I love my 24-hour lights. I would probably have loved them better if they were submersible. Yeah, this is this is interesting. I mean, this is a real interesting concept. I'm anxious to get to try it. I've never had a sub. It always seemed like a gimmick to me. And sometimes they would sell those sort of wiry underwater things, you know, like LED strips that were flimsy. But this is like a heavy duty, and, and it's got this this airline. So it so it lets bubbles out from I guess from around the light. I don't know if the bubbles are going to be colored or I don't know what the deal is, but uh, it'd be pretty interesting. It'd be pretty interesting. So watch for a review on that. I'm going to put it in the twenty gallon tall. It's going to feel a lot more stable than that uh, Higer horizon light that's sitting on top of the evaporation evaporation trays on top which could fall into the aquarium with just one little bump <clears throat> all right let's see here any other questions hit me now Let me see. It looks like Peas and Haps Forever is having a discussion with Jerry about PetSmart, Petland. Do you have Pet Supermarket out there? I have Pet Supermarket next door to me here. Sometimes they have great fish, and sometimes you go there, and there's a lot of fin rot. AJK thought Lazarus was funny. <laughs> My favorite people are people with a sense of humor. <laughs> Daniel uh, Macon, the hierarchy in my tank is causing some of my cichlids to look very dull. Any advice on this without removing fish? Well, um, you could go a couple ways, Daniel. You could actually do the opposite. You could add more fish, making it less likely that any one fish is going to be singled out. You might consider... Um, you might consider adding some things that break up the line of sight, like a tall plant like this here, this tall plant that allows the fish sometimes to kind of sneak up behind it and just be off of everybody's radar for a little while. You might add some caves. Sometimes caves are good. And uh, I, I use those. Uh... Yeah, here's one. You look here in the back of the 90 gallon. We'll go to the key. Uh in here look at the back of the 90 gallon you'll see a big cave back there that's a cave from my friends over at uh, underwater galleries they come in all sizes from gigantic like three times that size to very very small like the size of a golf ball so caves are good fish can go into caves but adding more fish and spreading around the aggression I would try that first, uh, or adding a tall plant or decoration where that gives the fish a chance to have a break. And uh, I'd watch them for a while. I'd watch them. If you have one fish that's really being a bully and really just making life miserable for everybody, you might want to you might want to remove them. I mean, that's the only way I was able to get to a tank like this behind me where I have uh, fish that are killers that occasionally chase but never kill. They, they just, uh, you know, you can see here. Yeah, they, they, they confront each other from time to time. They get in each other's uh, grill, get in each other's face every now and then. But for the most part, what you're seeing, that's it, day in and day out. 
they just kind of drift around. Maybe it's because it's so much open space. I mean, it's a, it's a seven foot across aquarium, I think like 33 or 35 inches from front to back, 300 gallons. I mean, that's, that's a big playground, but there's a lot of fish in there. You can't really tell how big they are because of the size of the tank, but like that, that trout that's bouncing around, he's about, he's pushing on 10 inches. my hand there you can tell about the difference in size they're big they're big fish but um i'm gonna add probably three or four more and then that's pretty much it that's pretty much it for this i thought about adding a combination of ob's because i heard that maybe putting five ob's at once might work but um, i don't know if i want to risk ob's i love the combination of fish i have now the colors the shapes everybody seems to be behaving Even the eye biter, and even the venusus, and the living stone eye, and the fusco, they're all being nice little puppy dogs, even though they're the notorious nimbochromus. All right. What did Steve say? Steve Squiddity for Armstrong. Hey, Ben, how many tanks you got at the moment? What products are you giving away today? Is it only for U.S.? It's for U.S. because that's the only way I can ship. I was giving away Sarah food and some filter media. And unfortunately, it has to be in the continental United States because shipping abroad is just nuts. Uh, I currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I currently have 10 tanks and two sumps <laughs> you call those tanks so one two three four five six seven eight nine so ten tanks and two sumps and uh two three six hundred seven hundred about eight hundred gallons of water roughly about eight hundred gallons of water so and i spend probably between five to seven concentrated hours a week in the fish room, uh, taking care of business, doing things, you know, cleaning out filters, uh, cleaning the glass, getting everything uh, up to snuff. And uh, as a result, they, 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 if you stay on top of it, you stay on top of it, it's, it's good. I had to work a little extra hard. You saw that video on getting back from vacation. Uh, you know, there was uh, some algae buildup on glass. There was uh, um, detritus on the substrate that normally doesn't show. And so there's a little extra work I had to do when I got back from being away. But usually every other day, I've got something I have to do in here. I have to uh, rinse out the media in one of the hang-on back filters, or I have to clean out one of the expert Maddox or do some vacuuming in the white substrate tank. You know, things like that. By the way, the babies in the 20 gallon tall are doing great. The filter, the, the heater, the heater has this ribbed outside shell. You know, sometimes heaters have a plastic shell. This one has a ribbed, it's like little openings in it. And so the little fish go in there and it's perfect because the big fish can't get them. So they have a perfect place to hide if a big fish runs after them and just go into the heater area and they fit in there perfectly. And I'm keeping those fish really well fed so they're, they're not interested in those little guys. And I've got a liar tail molly, a couple of Mickey Mouse, three Mickey Mouse platies, and a uh, cherry barb that was born here, and, and the three babies. And also, uh, I think I'm going to put a little pleco in there, maybe. Or maybe put some little baby Cory cats, if I get a hold of some Cory cats. I'm going to get some laser Corys from the Cichlichak. He's sending me some lasers. He's sending me some red hooks, red hook uh, uh, silver dollars, and some albino hecali. Uh, just some amazing fish. So watch for that. That shipment should be occurring this week. And uh, it's going to give me a really interesting set of problems on how to quarantine and 
and uh, introduce those fish into the tanks. But it's a fun problem. It'll be a fun problem. So <clears throat> at any rate, folks, thank you so much for spending an hour with me on Saturday. You could be watching college football, but here you are. And uh, Todd Martin in the 300, there are no hiding places unless you go behind a plant. No caves, uh, nothing. There's no caves or nothing. So uh, Sundar, I already fed the fish, uh, but I promise next week I'll give them some uh, frozen krill at the end of the, uh, of the live stream next week. But they're already fed. I don't want to overfeed them. So uh, let's see here. Dakota Barnes, Dakota Barnes, have a bicolor, is still recovering from bloat, but has recently developed a sore under his pectoral fin and hasn't shown interest in food in weeks. Any tips? Well, definitely some salt to help uh, have him clean out his intestines. You can use uh, Paracleanse, uh, might help. That sore, I don't know, that sore, you'd almost have to look at it. You'd almost have to look at that sore. Maybe some API general cure. Don't mix meds. Uh, be sure that they're meds that are compatible with each other. Don't put them in together. But API general cure is usually a good sh a, a, a good uh, way to go. But um, definitely salt. Some Fritz A plus aquarium salt. That's uh, that's part of the miracle that I just saw occur with that auto pharynx. Fishman Marcus doesn't like college football. <laughs> Here in Tennessee, boy, oh boy, you know, over in Knoxville, they got the Tennessee Volunteers, and I think they beat Georgia. It's a big deal here. It's a real big deal. I'm not that into it, but it's a big deal. Barn, Barnes, it's pronounced bar, Barnes. Oh, okay, Barnes. Say it, it's pronounced Barnes. Okay, thank you for that. And Melissa, you have a great weekend too. Been treating with Paragard, Metroplex, and salts. Okay, you're doing you're doing the right thing. Uh, unless the meds say don't change the water, be sure to give them lots of fresh water too, and uh, and be sure you have no nothing that'll remove the meds from your filters. Right, no chemical filtration, no no pyrogen, no charcoal, nothing like that in your filters, or else you're wasting your money, and the meds are being absorbed by the charcoal. You're welcome, Cat Sailor. You know, try uh, uh, sometimes Dakota. There's a fish. Uh, there's a fish food called uh, Omega One. There's an Omega One frozen cubes. I think it's called Cichlid Delight that has garlic in it. That's really hard to not eat. Uh, that's worked for me. Um, I had an eye biter back in California that wouldn't eat. And I put that in there, and he went crazy. Couldn't stop eating it. Uh, that might be an idea. It has garlic already in it. Uh, Omega-1 Cichlid Delight. Uh, they also find frozen krill impossible to resist. And if you were to mix a little bit of garlic garden with it, it, they would probably drive him crazy. If he doesn't eat that, there's something really seriously wrong. Really, really wrong. And um, And you know what? They can go 24, they can go 20 days without eating. So don't. Don't panic just yet. They can go. They can go wild. Remember, females, females will hold what 22, 24 days without eating when they're holding. So uh, they can go a while. They can go a while. So don't panic if he hasn't eaten for a few days. Don't worry about it. I didn't feed that. Uh, he was the the tetrastigma was ignoring the food. So if I drop it in, all I do is pollute the tank he was in. I just didn't feed him for three or four days. You know, and uh, anyway, so he came back. All right, don't forget, folks, if you did a super chat of $5, uh, you get a packet of Sarah food. If you did $15, you get three, right? And uh, one for every $5 increment. And send me your um, your complete mailing address to ben.o.cichlid in the continental United States. If you were the largest super chat over $20, you will get this if you want it. Send me your, your address. I will mail it to you. And, uh, and you know what? I'll include four food packets as well since uh, 
you went, you went at least four increments of five dollars. So there you go. So um, Robert Johnson wants to know about uh, Northfin. Northfin ran into a little bit of an ingredient issue, and I stopped using them back then. They have since corrected that issue, and they are now a good quality fish food again. I just haven't gotten back to using them. I am using Northfin Betta pellets currently, and the better love them. The better love those uh, pellets. Nothing wrong with Northfin. They're a good food. Any issues they had have been corrected. And uh, I used them for a long time with no issues. But then I, I ran across uh, a video by Corey. He visited the farm that makes the extreme food. I was so impressed by the color of the fish that I, that I went with extreme. And extreme is my key food now. And I mix in with it uh, a little bit of Pisces Energetics. I mix uh, Sarah, right? The granule green. I put some, some vegetables in it. I, um, you know, so I mix various things in, in it. I make a mix. And that's what I feed them currently. And that's right, Cichlid Kings. The, the freeze-dried, the, the krill, <coughs> excuse me, when you feed them krill, it should be gone in like 90 seconds. It should be all gone. If, if there's still some hanging around after a minute or two, you've overfed them, and you probably should get a net and get it out of there because it'll just rot and uh, pollute your tank increase your ammonia all right i keep getting distracted and you're making it impossible for me to end off but i love spending time with you thank you so much for stopping by don't forget to hit that sub button and that thumbs up we're getting close to fifty thousand. i'm getting excited about that and i will see you folks this coming week look for some product review videos and uh, some other exciting changes and a big shipment delivery that James is sending me. Look for that unbox video. That should be exciting. All right. Thank you, my friends. You are the best. And I think with that, we will go ahead and end off. Bye-bye for now.